Can economists forecast economic crashes? Unfortunately, at the moment, we have had very little success. And this is not the first time that's happened. In 1929, almost nobody forecast the Great Depression coming. And the only economist who did, Roger Babson, then forecast a very speedy recovery over the next three years and ruined his reputation by getting that badly wrong. So the problem is that events look relatively normal for quite long periods of time. This chart shows Japanese exports in annual percentage changes. So they start off at about 15% and they go down as low as about minus 15. You can see they're, they're moving around, but they're varying within a reasonable range. And then quite suddenly, the distribution shifts and you get an enormous crash here. Japanese exports ended falling by 70% year on year, which quite terrified the Bank of Japan. In fact, I was lecturing on economic forecasting at the Bank of Japan when this first number came in, which they didn't believe. And they asked me what my forecast would be for the next outcome. And I said, well, pretty much the same, I'm afraid. In fact, the first estimate was much lower than they had previously measured, and it did end up being much worse. So distributions often shift abruptly. And we call these location shifts. The location of the data is up here, and then it ends up down here. And this recovered reasonably fast for Japan. I mean, it's still a disastrous fall, but it did recover reasonably quickly. Whereas, like the Great Depression, the shift can last for 10, 20, 30 years, depending on the causes. Now, we've done a lot of research into location shifts and what their impacts are. And most statistical inference works around something like a normal distribution. It's got a mean, I've chosen zero, but that's completely arbitrary, and some variability around that mean, and any outcome within that would be a perfectly reasonable draw. However, some distributions have got what are called much fatter tails. They go out much, much further, and an event that goes way out in the tails is sometimes called a black swan, after the refutation of the famous syllogism, all swans are white, this is a swan, therefore it must be white. But in fact, when they got to Australia, they discovered there were black ones. Black swans can occur and do occur in many markets. But if one was drawing independently, the next draw would be much more likely to be back in the center and might even be in the opposite direction. However, a location shift leads to flocks of black swans suddenly appearing. You get lots of events that look like extreme compared to what was here, way outside the region you might expect. And this has become a new norm. And the shift of distributions makes the new ordinary seem unusual relative to the past, but might persist for quite a long period of time. 